went through the spring 21 release notes and I just kind of jotted down all the things that I thought were interesting, maybe things that were gonna impact some of the orgs that I'm working in. And I thought I'd just share them quickly with you. So at a high level, these are the five things I'm gonna cover. These are just the uh, dates that things are gonna be uh, rolling out. There was a cool My Domain thing, um, new flow features, and then two small things with communities and opportunities. So let's jump right in. So the first deployment was January 15th. That's already passed us. Uh, the next one is February 5th, uh, the weekend of the 5th. And the last one is uh, the weekend of the 12th. So the 13th, I think, is a Sunday. Uh, so everyone should wake up on Sunday morning on the 13th and should have the new release. Now to figure out when your specific org is going to get it, you can go to the status.salesforce.com. And let's take a look at that. So if you know your instance name, uh, you can put it in here and it'll jump to it, or you can just put in your domain name. So mine is Duwow. And I can see I'm on NA114. So I'll click into that. And then I think you go to maintenance. Yeah, so here I can see the spring 21 major release and I'm getting it on February 13th. So that is how you check it for your specific instance. All right, let's take a look at the My Domain settings. Um, so My Domain. So here, uh, one thing that's really cool is the new routing. Uh, so you can push your content to the Salesforce Edge network now. So this is big for, I'd say, enterprise situations where you've got like global access to your Salesforce org. So instead of it being um, always slow, if you're coming like, say your, your org is on the NA uh, suite of servers, North America, but you've got people in Europe that are trying to access it. So if you uh, turn on the edge network, then people in that other country can get faster access to the content. Uh, the other thing that I like in here is that you can edit your domain name and uh, you don't have to reach out to Salesforce to get that change. I don't know if that's exactly new, but it's, I guess, new to me. I never noticed this before. Um, at some point, I think they're also rolling out the ability to have your own domain name for communities. Uh, I, th they, I read in the documentation that they're going to be slowly rolling out the enhanced domain names. Um, and it should be completed by March, uh, but starting in February. But I'm not seeing the enhanced uh, domain stuff in mind yet. Okay, so let's look at some of the cool flow stuff. So I'll create a new flow, and it's gonna be a record triggered flow. And uh, so the cool thing is that you can now access the history or the, the prior values of, uh, of the record in the flow. So you no longer have to do like an extra query to get what the prior value was. So to do that, um, I'll make this be an updated uh, trigger. And I'll select like account, for example. Uh, nothing. Done. Okay, so now in the decision, uh, I can see in the resources, in addition to having a record, I have a record underscore underscore prior. So now I can see like if the prior value is different than the new value, then do something else. Um, or you could do like a formula that returns like true or false if the two are different, like build your own is changed kind of thing. Um, so that's gonna be handy. Uh, let's see, another cool flow thing, uh, scheduled paths. So you can have uh, uh, basically the same thing that a process builder used to do, uh, where you could say like, do this thing uh, two days from now. Uh, so for example, if I change this to just created, then when, so basically when the account is created, I can now add a scheduled path and say like follow up. And it could be, uh, from the created date, like two days, days after, two days after the created date, then do this thing. Um, so 
I think if I were to have an action on here that sends an email. Oh, and actually this is another new feature. Uh, you can now send rich text emails in the send action. And to do that, you uh, turn this on. So this guy is new. And you can probably set this to like a, a resource that you create as like a text template. And inside of here, you could put, uh, you can put now like HTML. So you should be able to go like this. Um, and now that's gonna be uh, like rich text instead of, so that this will actually get sent now um, instead of it always just being the raw text. Actually, I'm not quite doing that right because I'm viewing it as rich text. So I could have just said bold and then highlight it. Yeah, and then if I view it as plain, then you would see, okay, it puts the tags in there. So, so yeah, that's going to be a cool feature. I'll, otherwise, yeah, I think you were limited to just all text. Um, so if I just go through here and put some tests. Test, test, test. Now, when I connect this, um, I could do that follow-up. So that's kind of cool. I guess one thing to watch out for is that I think this is just like the same as a paused interview and there's limits to the number of paused interviews that you can have like existing in an org. So just don't go too crazy with it. Um, okay, so that is that one. The other cool one is multi-column screens. And I have not actually looked at this yet, so let's take a look now. Uh, if I change this, I guess it can't be a trigger one. It has to be like a UI one. So I'll go back. I'll create a new flow, but this time it'll be like one with a UI, a screen flow. Yeah. And we will add a screen. And now... Ah, uh, section. Ah, uh, this is the new one. Ah, uh, full width. Oh, I can add columns. Yeah, so it's up to 12. So this is like normal, like, uh, uh, responsive type of layout system. And then real quick, the last one that I thought was interesting for flows uh, is on a screen. Now, when you uh, go back to uh, the screen. Like say you have like two screens and you go next and then go previous. Uh, when, you're, when you're coming back to the screen, you can, um, you can control what it, uh, what it does with the value that was, that was on the screen. So if I add like a, uh, a name field here, I've got this new advanced section here. So when the screen is revisited, you can tell it to uh, just keep the value from uh, when the last uh, visited, when the user last visited the screen, or you can have it refresh the inputs. So I think the, the refreshing of it is kind of the new thing where if the, if the data had changed in the back end and you want it to not reflect the new value or some other uh, variable changed. Uh, this can now reflect that new value. Um, so that's that's kind of neat. Okay, for communities, uh, I guess communities aren't called communities anymore. So that's going to take a while to get used to. They're called experiences or digital experiences. But the big one for this is that uh, permissions are changing. Uh, you can't give the, a guest user uh, access to like view all, modify all, uh, and even edit and delete. Um, so basically, I guess you can just create new records. Uh, so if you need to be able to edit uh, content, I guess you're going to have to come up with some different approach uh, so that it's not editing a record through that guest profile. Maybe. Um, Maybe have to create a platform event and then respond to the platform event with a different user. Uh, there's probably a bunch of different approaches that you could use, but 
permissions are probably going to start breaking. So that's a big one. Okay, and the last cool feature uh, is with opportunities, uh, opportunity products actually for, for specifically. So you can create now a, uh, a, a lookup field that points to a opportunity product. So if I have some type of test object here, uh, doing a terrible job typing. Create some test object. And now I can create a field that is a lookup. Look up, look up, look up. And now I can finally select opportunity element OP opportunity product. So that I guess gives you more possibilities um, for using price book. Uh, so I plan on using this quite a bit. So that's it. If, uh, if there are some cool features that you liked um, that I missed, uh, please put them in the comments. I'd be interested in hearing some of the features that you're going to take advantage of. That's it. Have fun.